Hello and welcome to the ninth month of the year. Like a joke, we are right here. You know, um, September came like a joke. I don't know what happened, but August came with a whole lot of speed. But the good thing is that we are here. Happy New Month, lovers. Happy, new, happy month. new Month, happy new Michael. Month. And Happy New, happy new well. Month <laughs> to our friends. Viewers right there. Yeah, Happy New Week. Happy new We're week. getting the week started on a beautiful note. You know what? Yeah. Uh, today, of course, is Monday, mm -hmm. the second day of September 2024. 2024. And already, um, this is the 246th day wow. in 2024. Wow. All right? Wow. This is the 200 and... Uh, 46th day in 2024. Guess how many days that we have left? We have 120 more days to get off 2024 and get into 2025th. Welcome to another wonderful day. My name is Ramsey and of course, Love It and Michael are right here. Let's take you through some of the remarkable things that happened on the second day of December in history. We call it this day in history oh, today, today in history, in history. today in history yeah. let's just get to you know i'm going to talk about china oh, the world yeah. war <laughs> of course on this day okay the second day of september 1945 japan formally surrendered in ceremonies aboard the uss missouri in tokyo bay ending world war ii Mm. So that's what happened on this day, on the second day of September 1945. What do we have from your end, Michael? Uh, today I have um, a very spectacular news today. Uh, today in 1998, John Paul Akayesu is a former mayor of a small town in Rwanda, found guilty of nine count charges of oh. genocide by the United Nations International Criminal Tribunal oh. for Rwanda. For, for Rwanda, that's so long. Oh, <laughs> that was a long time coming. Long time well, conviction has started a long time ago. Yeah. Love it. Today in history. Well, right. What I have today in history is 1980, 2nd September, Daniel Olusola Dani Shuti, professional footballer, was born in Lagos. That is so great. I Happy birthday, Dani Shuti. Oh, he's him. a professional footballer. Yeah, he was so <laughs> outstanding. He is a professional footballer. He was so outstanding, just like the way we have the likes of uh, Okwaraji. I think he was yeah. even there before the before. likes of Okwaraji. Well, uh, while, while you were saying the footballer, I was like, ah, is it Okocha? Is it Kanu? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I mean, Not known as like, Dani Shuti. Oh yeah, you wouldn't know him. Yeah, you're you're an indomi so baby. You're an indomi baby. Ah, you serious? <laughs> All right, that is the size of today in history. Let's get to what the headlines are saying for today. And um, mm, Dangote Refinery again, we won't get tired of it. We won't mm. get tired of talking about it because on almost all the papers this morning, it's petrol scarcity, wasn't wasn't when Nigerians are thinking it's going to get soft. It's getting worse by the day. Dangote Refinery petrol ready for rollout. Good news. We've heard. Let it happen. Nigerians, you know, this administration, one thing is that Nigerians, whatever they hear, they'll say, hmm. We don't hear, let it happen, all right? When it start happening, then we'll start beating the drum. Details read on page 19. Power generation down by 1,400 megawatt acts. This call reject allocation. Details read on page 20. And of course, Nigeria has second highest rate of food insecurity. According to Bill Gates. Oh, my God. Ah, oh, food insecurity. Details read on page 3. And the big story is a petrol scarcity set to worsen as NNP. CL admits six billion dollars debt. Two riders to that story, and I will be done with the Punch newspaper. The first rider says that debt to petrol suppliers has caused financial strain. PMS supply threatened. This is coming from NNPC. Then the second rider says that petrol queues spread. Motorists lament as fuel marketers decry. PMS shortage. Oh my God, my God! It is, it is something else. The my queue, God, the queue has persisted. I was even thinking it was going to reduce, but then not just in Abuja municipality. Other states are also crying for the same thing. So, Dangote Refinery is starting to roll out. It's a splendid thing for Nigerians. But like, yeah, let's let's get a feeling like it happened to diesel. Mm -hmm. I went to get a gas uh, over the weekend, and the price of something else. 
1,000, one, one kg is 1,350 uh, naira. Some places 1,400. 1,400. Yes. All right, uh, let's get to the next paper from you, Michael. All right, thank you. We'll move straight to the Nation newspaper today. Uh, now the kicker of the first story I'll take above the header, fresh fears of food crisis as flood sweep states submerge farmlands. One writer to that story, governors, agencies in frantic effort to salvage, to save situation or to salvage situation. Away from that, weaker to PDP governors is the kicker. Still clear of reverse PDP structure or risk fire in your state. That is threatening. Very, very go funny. ahead, go ahead. I don't want to say anything. <laughs> I don't want to say anything because uh, that story is huge. well, well, we'll talk about that later. Yeah, 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 let's huge. let's just get going because from that, if I want to talk about wiki, mm. song will rise, song will <laughs> set. So let's just get going. Away from that, the big story, the kicker is fuel scarcity. Suppliers shown NMPC over six billion dollars BMS debt. To write us to that story, five vessels re refuse to discharge petrol credit. Transactions normal in oil trading, says company's spokesman in page four. Now, the last story I'll take on the nation newspaper today is how medical students rescued from kidnappers cheated dead twice. Details on page seven. And then, uh, you know, you know what is happening now uh, with Napoli. Uh, Napoli goes tough with Osime, banishes him from first team. Very, very regrettable. Very regrettable. But that's the last story I'll take on the nation newspaper today. If, if anyone wants to get to know more about yeah. that story, just join us uh, for the spot so you keep tab on the channel because we're really going to talk about that extensively today. We're talking about your brother, Osimen. Absolutely. Mm. And that's the last story I'll take on the nation's newspaper today. Over to you. Love it. Well, all right. The paper I have here today with me is um, Daily Trust. And um, the big story here says... Um, Petrol price may rise as NNPC admit financial trainer. Oh, that is so serious. And then um, the right to write that here said, um, why hack is inevitable expert. And then um, the second right that here said, article demand listing of oil firms on stock exchange. And the second story here says, um, CBN won over blood proofs SUV for governors deputies and then um, the second story has said and bad governors protesters for trials in abuja kanu kaduna boronu today and that is where i have for you today in daily trust mr thanks to mr ramsey all right thank you very much love it um i don't know but then bad governance <laughs> all right let's quickly dive into let's delve into the new telegraph and see what we have right there um i don't know I think I should talk about this. Electricity is the kicker and the federal government to spend $800 million for substations distribution. Very vital. Nothing, see, no fuel, no electricity, no power supply. So, so what are we living for in Nigeria? No insecurity. Insecurity. Oh, my God. Only Nigeria? God really loves this country. Yeah, or else it would have been worse. It would have been worse. Would have been worse. Yeah. All right, I'm moving on. Let's quickly get to this one. New U.S. aviation law delists Nigeria from Category 1 status. Mm. Meaning some of our, our our aircraft will not be going to U.S. anymore. We'll not be going to U.S. We'll not go to U.S. Mm. Let me let me let me let me let me check at look at what uh, the writer is saying. Uh, designated Nigerian carriers. Uh, can't fly to U.S. as Ethiopia, Egypt, Rwanda, Morocco, mm. S.A. make list. South so Africa what happened to Nigeria? I don't know. Okay, Nigerians cannot fly to U.S. Yes, then. yes, but these other countries checks. make the list. They said uh, Nigerian carriers, Nigerian carriers, carriers. Yeah. okay, carriers. Maybe uh, that should be passenger yeah, uh, aircraft. Passenger, yes. Well, then the second writer say BA faces legal action over alleged inhuman treatment of Nigeria. Details read on page two and six. I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's happening to Nigeria. Well, I think our leaders need to sit up at this very particular point in time. The last I will be taking from the Niger New Telegraph is the big story where Tinubu declares war on bandits, others military chiefs to relocate to Sokoto. They should Kukuma carry the headquarters to Sokoto and go and stay there so that we will know it is battle for battle. I think that's a good one if this really happens Absolutely. and the banditry, the kidnapping, the insecurity in the country is being copped. That will be fine. One right to that story. Residents celebrate President's directive. Residents are celebrating it. 
But then, let's see how this is going to happen at the end of the day. And that's going to be the size of the headlines. But then, when we return from this break, we'd like to talk about the fact that this directive is coming. It is one thing to give directives, then it's another thing to get it implemented. And after implementation, it's another thing to supervise it and hold some people accountable for their actions, as the case may be. When we return, we'll talk about this on The Big Story. My name is Ramsey, and it's been Love It and Michael. Don't go nowhere. Follow us on our social media handles at Obeleke TV. Visit our website at www.obeleke.tv for a thrilling journey. Obeleke TV, rising star at the fairground. Welcome back from that break. It is still at numbered live on your screen where you have Ramsey and of course Lovett and Michael. What are we talking about? Ah, this is an instruction. This is not just an instruction but yeah. a directive coming mm -hmm. from the number one citizen of the country. I think to an extent it appears as if the cry of the people is getting to the ears of the president as it has always been anyway. But then I think given directive that the service chiefs should relocate to Sokoto State is something. This is because of the ah, alarming rate of insecurity, banditry and the rest of it. If they can operate from there to other parts of the country, good and fine. But then this directive has been given. How is it going to be implemented? Then what will happen? thereafter that's what we're talking about residents are celebrating there is joy it's people are happy oh the service chiefs to relocate to sokoto state ah oh, a peace has finally returned but has peace finally returned to the people of sokoto state michael well uh relocating the the minister of defense minister of state for defense bello Matawale is a good thing, and also the service chiefs, all the service chiefs, Army, Navy, Air Force, simultaneously to Sokoto. Remember, it's 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 a joint thing, not just Sokoto. There will be other five northern states that have been sporadic menace of kidnapping, terrorism, and of course, you know, even the reason why the people are rejoicing is because ah, finally it seems like finally. they are coming to salvage finally. the situation because the directive went straight pa, you know, and said hey, with immediate effect. Relocate. I even want the decent chief of defense staff. Thank God, it's always the service chiefs. Everybody, even ex, let the military presence there be very, very, uh, be very, very strong because it's something else. These people live in fear. Not just, not just Sokoto, Katsina, Kaduna, and then um, Borono. Of course, we, of course, we all know Borono, but no, is the you know is the chief of uh, Medugri insurgency to make sure that they, their presence we curtail because Jigawa, Taraba, sit, all these citizenry, states. those in the localities have been living in fear as if they are not even part of Nigeria. It's been regrettable for so long. I mean, according to statistics from 2023 to, to, to now, to June 2024, uh, if I mention the number of people that have been kidnapped, mm. farmers, every day they go to farm, they are kidnapped and ransom are being demanded on daily basis. That is why you see that the prices of food and commodities in Nigeria is high because most times those farmers do not go to farm again because mostly, you know, they need to make to some petty from the north. Going to even kidnap farmers, how much will you get? The farmers, uh, why most, not? Most, most I'm not saying kidnap. States are rich. Kidnap, kidnapping is not good. Mm. But then, um, these kidnappers can be trapped. Okay, the trapping can be more uh, sporadic. It mm -hmm. can be, it, 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 it will be more speedy if the people they are targeting are the high class oh, people. High class people, yeah. If you go for the high class people, they chase you in a high class way. So, going after farmers, I'm not saying kidnapping is good for anyone. I don't wish anyone kidnapping. But then, if you are really looking for money, you should know where to look for the money. So, for the presidency, actually, you know, making that directive is an intensified effort to cope the menace of terrorism and kidnapping. And I believe it too, it will actually all go well because from there, from Sokoto, they will infiltrate other northern, its neighboring northern states, and Farah and Bauchi and all that. When you talk about farmers that are being kidnapped, for instance, you're kidnapped and you're asked to pack all the things you've stored in your in your store. So, most of <laughs> those the are local are not, kidnappers might not demand for money. You start supplying them food so they will eat to kidnap others. But then, <laughs> very, very, but I don't know. I, but then it's laudable. It's that um, actually. It's good. It's not. It's not I think it's not all about saying it. 
it's all about implementing this action because it's not today this bandit started in Nigeria and I believe that there are sponsors of these people because these people probably they move with gun they mm -hmm. move with a lot of weapons mm -hmm. and these people doesn't have these people they are so all these outside people they are so hungry that can't I don't think they can afford the money to afford those the, weapons, the, weapons. You know, those so I believe there is big use. wings that are sponsoring these people and um, it's not all about saying it on newspaper and social media they should implement it if we can, it's not today we started talking about, about this, yeah. this but um, then but then this relocation of this service chief is new I, it hasn't happened before relocating all of them to Sokoto is new yes yes so that, I, think I'm, I'm I think in the past the past now. administration have actually relocated the chief to of Burno, army staff to or Burno. also to Burno. Burno. Yeah, yeah. but now i think i'm even talking about this talking about sponsors you know sometimes if you don't get to the roots and you're dealing with the stem the mm -hmm. the leaves it wouldn't Cut hold, it yes, top, it, grows Cut, again. it grows again. So why not arrest the sponsors? So, one, so many times we've read about people who are sponsoring them. Mm -hmm. Some people have even claimed they know these bandits the and is, they want um settlement mm -hmm. between them and the federal government that they will mediate. And if these people are known, their sponsors are known, then what is the problem anymore? I think that's a problem solved. A problem known is half solved. Cut the head, the head of the snake if, and the snake the, is... Is killed That's it. it. So let's the get it from the root. From How the did root. they get those sophisticated weapons? That's what Lovett just talked yeah. about. Most times you wonder because if you see video, okay, there was a time last week some terrorists and bandits came out to start abusing Tinobu. Yes, they make live like video. They even have TikTok. With their guns. They have a TikTok account. account. So if we have intelligence, defense intelligence, and the DSS and the SSS, track those people. Get they their... are trackable, yeah? I know. They are so trackable. Are they, still there? they should do that. That's what we are saying. I think the federal government is trying. The, the service chiefs are trying. Everyone is trying. Individuals are trying. But we need more effort. Because mm -hmm. like a joke, this thing has eaten too deep into mm -hmm. the fabrics of the society. And it's becoming like a no. The people are already living with it. I don't know. This is not good for our economy. This is not good for our nation. So the federal government, the service chiefs should do something about it. And this directive coming from the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria is commendable. But then the action should be swift. And then the accountability and, of course, uh, the supervision is very important. And this is going to be the size of the big story on that number this morning. Coming up next is the review. Don't go nowhere. Uh, just stay on the tab, all right? And don't forget that we also have other beautiful programs lined up for you today. Sport is going to be coming up much later. And remember, if you are not informed, you are deformed. The news will be coming on your way. So all you have to do is, after this time, don't leave the channel. Visit it from time to time for more juicy information, education, and of course, entertainment. My name is Ramsey Enoch. I'll see you again. Same time, same station tomorrow. Bye-bye for now.